Good evening, Freddy. This one's for you. I had a question in my comment section on one of my videos asking me to, ex to show how to um, do rawhide backing. And, <laughs> gosh, you know, uh, even if I had the ability to edit my videos, you know, there's a certain point where it gets from just, you know, explaining and showing the process to just entertainment. And rawhide backing in itself is relatively simple, and I do believe that whether or not you've had experience with uh, backing of any, any type, on bows, just just uh, listen carefully. It's it's not rocket science. Rawhide, um, it's not tanned. It's a whole different thing. It's basically you take the skin off of an animal, you clean the goo off, and you dry it. It's a rawhide. It's a beautiful backing material. This is a rawhide. It's a Western Diamondback. Technically, it's rawhide backing. It's not going to add any strength. Really, it might hold down the mildest of liftoffs on the back, but this isn't going to add any strength. But we can pretend that this is either bull snake, which is thick enough, or uh, boa, which is thick enough, or sea snake, which is thick enough, or deer rawhide, what people typically um, back bows with, although antelope, you get my drift. So there's, there's basically three parts to that. You have the rawhide, you have the bow, and you have the glue. And it's up till now, everyone is right on target. The backing, what you're going to back it to, and sticking it together. Let's start with um, the bow. This, this happens to be red oak, um, born of a board, which makes backing with sinew or rawhide or anything an easier process and a more sure process because. This is kind of plain song, but it's also kind of rough, which means that the, the grain is running at an angle. So glues and greases, anything you put on there that's liquid, will penetrate very easily. If you were to take Osage and work it down to uh, the heartwood, single growth ring, very smooth. And if it's a self boat, it needs to be just silky smooth, or if it's black locust or whatever, whatever kind of stave bow. You have worked it down to one growth ring lovingly, whether or not you just pulled the bark off. You have a smooth, basically impenetrable surface that works beautifully for a softball, not so much with backing. You have to take that leap of faith. You're going to have to take that beautiful, shiny, smooth back that's going to resist glue soaking in, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to scarify it somehow. Now, you never want to scarify it we're not even to the point of degreasing yet. You want to scarify it from tip to tip. Never scarify it this way. You can put deep gouges in the back of a bow from tip to tip, and if they're deep parallel, you're not necessarily going to destroy the fibers of that bow. So first off, you're not destroying the, the, um, the strength of that back. Take the leap of faith, the backing is going to help. The backing is going to take the brunt of the tensional load. So just suck it up and scratch up that back. If they make 40 grit sandpaper, I think the lowest I've seen is 50. Or a rough, it, it, even rock, not one with like a big jag in it, you know. Anything to make grooves, groovify that. Hacksaw blade, uh, a small miter saw, anything. Be brave. Scratch it up. It gives the, the glue the greatest amount of purchase. In the last video when I was talking about CNU, my advanced tricks, you saw I had white gloves. I wasn't waiting tables. Those were white gloves because once I degrease that and I'm working with it, and even after CNU backing, because I'm going to do wraps, I don't want to get my hand oils on there. So degrease it. Um, Primitive Teen brought up percolating water through um, ashes, typically hardwood ashes, uh, oak ashes work really good, to create an alkali alkaline solution. Alkaline plus grease equals soap, which equals something that's going to break down surface tension. Aha! That's a tip. And so you've degrease that 
with whichever method you want. Again, you're backing it. It's going to have to have time to dry out, so you can get away with just scrubbing it with a detergent under water. Getting water on it is not going to kill it. It's not going to soak in. It's not going to raise the moisture level instantly. You're okay if your wood gets wet. Degreased. Okay, so this is ready to go with the glue. I'm going to talk about tight bond. I'm also going to talk about hide slash fish bladder glue slash senior glue that I use because I make my own glue. The rawhide. Let's say this isn't a snake skin, which, you know, comes more than often, extremely clean, relatively degreased, fine. If you're working with deer, you're going to have to first cut it into strips, which makes this next process either easier. And scrape it with a nice sharp knife. You need to scrape all the, the former living tissue underneath the skin off of that. You need to clean that hide. The better you clean it, the better you degrease it, the better chance the glue will have to be absorbed into it. Scrape it first. Get all the, um, the goo off of it. And by goo, I mean fat and flesh. Then go back and sand it. It works the same way as the bow. You need to kind of scarify it. You need to... Um, to prepare that so it's ready to absorb glue. So I get a rough sanding block. I use 80 grit. The workhorse for tellering, also the workhorse for um, preparing hides. And so I sand it and it can be tricky to when it gets wet when you soak it to see which side you sand it because it lays flat. And I'll usually take a pencil and just write like a letter on it so I know that that's the side that's going to be glued. And so you've taken your hide, you've scraped the goo off, you've sanded it with 80 grit. Now, typically with deer hide, you have a longer bow, you're going to have a scarf joint over the handle. This next step isn't necessary, but it helps. I'll take the ends that are going to be the handle, and I'm going to sand them to a knife edge. So I get a good scarf joint. So in the center, even though you've got a hand wrap over that, it would hide it. I like to have it so it's just flat. A scarf joint is an angled joint that kind of overlaps. So you got it. Next, you want to trim it. And I rough trim it. Rough trim it dry. And so it's going to be wider. If I was to wet it and it starts um, loosening and, and stretching out and you were to rough trim it, you know, it, it's going to be, it'll wind up being smaller than if you do it dry. And I like to have a little extra that goes over because the next process when I'm actually wrapping it with something it's easy to slide off and you might have like a gap in it and it helps to have extra wet. Okay so you take a pencil or something uh, a sharp point will scribe along the limbs and you cut it out whether or not you're using a rock flake or scissors. Okay so now you have your hide um, scarf joint prepared uh, it's been roughened up so it'll accept glue. Now this is where I see um, differences in technique. I've watched videos on um, rawhide backing by people that, you, you know, there's a great number of people out there teaching survival skills and other things that did it twice and now they're an expert so they're expounding it. But I've also seen it done by people that know what they're doing. Hopefully I fall into that category. I do not over soak my, my hide. I do not leave it in water overnight. There's no use to having a big, thick, sloppy mess. If you soak it, you know, temperature, it's so dependent on temperature and water temperature and stuff, but I usually soak my hides no more than 45 minutes, maybe an hour at the most. I don't want them to be just big, nasty, gloppy, slippery, hard to handle thing. It's not necessary. And so, I'll soak my rawhide for 45 minutes or so. And I'm skipping a step. Size the bow. You have your, um, if you're using tight bond, there's three kinds of tight bond. Tight bond, tight bond 2, tight bond 3. Tight bond 3 is waterproof. Tight bond 2 is water resistant. Tight bond is just like carpenter's glue. And my choices would be tight bond or tight bond 2. Never tight bond 3. Type on 3, it's not necessary for these purposes to have waterproof glue. In fact, type on 3 is more brittle than type on 2, and it doesn't, I don't believe the bow will size as easily because when I'm sizing the bow, I'll take a little bit of dish soap, which just happens naturally if you um, use an alkaline thing because of the grease and alkaline 
corn salt. And if you size it first with just water and a little bit of dish salt, you're preparing that glue, whether or not it's hide glue or tight bond one or two, forget tight bond three, to soak in. You want it to to be liquid, watery, and reduce in su uh, surface tension as much as possible because you got to get that in there. And then if you're using hide glue or fish bladder glue or senior glue, keep going over it until when it dries, your finger will stick to it if you wet the tip of it. You're ready to go. And so I take my hide and I'll, I'll lay it on there and then I'll fold it in half. And this is sized. The hide was sized also. You have to size both. And I'll take my glue. If it's tight bond, I'll rub it on there, half of it. Lay it out. Center it. Get it on there. And then flip the other side and do the same thing. Rub the tight bond on there and do this. Do it to the other side. Okay, so you've got this. And because it's stretched, it's going to stick out on the tips. I'll take that and I'll fold it underneath so the hide can't go like this that has locked it. Then I will take, I'm a big fan of gauze, just cheap gauze, and I, I start up above the scarf joint and I wrap it. Wrap it pretty tight. There you go, and then just repeat it on the other side. So really the trick in rawhide is preparing, preparation. Now if you're using a natural glue like um, sinew glue or hide glue or fish bladder glue, it's going to surprise you. Now you soak your rawhide for 45 minutes, an hour. You didn't overdo it. You did not overdo it. And this is important with the natural glues, um, which I prefer actually. And so you do the same thing. You've got this. And it needs to be a somewhat thick glue mixture. Not the thin sizing, but a thicker so it will gel a little bit. And I, I do this two ways. I do the same thing, flip it over, smear the glue on there, and just push it down. And the same thing on there. And you do not, this is going to surprise you, with the hide glue, the natural glues, you do not need to wrap it. Just because that glue will gel, just hold it down like this, baby it. The hide will shrink up a little bit. And you are absolutely able to raw hide back a bow with hide glue and fish bladder glue and senior glue, the big three, and not wrap it. I do wrap it most of the time. And I'll wrap it with my gauze. I have that. You know, I didn't have to um, wrap it with the hide glues. But being kind of, uh, you know, I, I want to go above and beyond. I have a hot box. And it's as simple as a big box that has a hole cut out on one end and a hole cut out on the other end. And uh, a heat gun fits in that hole. Boom. And I just turn that on, place the wrapped bow in that hot box, and just let it sit for a while until the bow gets warm. That glue liquefies, has a chance to soak in, and then pull it out of the hot box. And because you heated that bow and re-gelled your hide glue, it was able to soak and mingle and just get absolutely super sticky. And that is the, the surest way um, to do that. Otherwise, I would not recommend holding it over heat, you know, an unwrapped bowl if you're doing it this way, just pushing it down. Because, of course, that heat's going to shrink it, and if it's not supported by wrap, bad things will happen. So let's see. Preparation of the bowl. Preparation of the hide. The glue choices. Forget type bond 3, type bond 2, type bond works really good. If you're using the tight bonds, you have to wrap it. If you're using hide glue, like they did many, many years ago, you do not need to wrap it, but I suggest wrapping it. My favorite wrap, forget like an inner tube or anything that's uh, non-porous, gauze. And you can where you can reuse the gauze 50 times if you're seeing new backing. It's a one-way trip with tight bond um, because the tight bond will bond and when you're unwrapping it, you're going to get pieces of gauze. But once you, um, it's all dry and everything, and then you can like sand the edges. If you're um, really careful and you trim that hide and it went on square when you wrapped it, it didn't shift over a little bit, 
you're going to have a clean edge along there, so you don't necessarily have to sand, but I do sand. I follow that up because I sand it at an angle. It's really thin on the sides, really porous. Then I'll just thin hide glue, you know, along that edge to seal it down, tight bond. And if you want to make it permanent and you're not against, like, uh, urethane finishes, I use Helmsman Spar Urethane. And that seals the whole thing really well, and it's flexible enough. It doesn't crack. It's good stuff. I can recommend um, Helmsman Spar Urethane. I don't know about the other finishes because you risk, you know, losing the strength. Now, as an experiment, I rawhide backed deer rawhide, one of my paddle bows. And I experimented with uh, acetone epoxy. If you take epoxy, you can mix acetone with it and turn it into a thin, thin, thin liquid paint and paint over something and then it still cures just like regular epoxy. But what happens there is because it's so um, non-flexible, that rawhide was useless. It just, it just cracked. When I, I drew a bow and it wasn't a heavy one, it failed because that rawhide was not able to stretch. So be careful on your finishes. If you use the hide glue, um, I would be reluctant to grease the back because then you can't repair it. And by repair, I mean if an edge lifts up, you can always fix it if you didn't grease it. You could always, I guess, degrease it, but that's kind of a pain. You can use um, shellac over sinew, so I'm assuming you can use it over rawhide, but don't quote me on that. It might act the same way because rawhide is not as strong as sinew. It might react the same way as that acetone um, mixed epoxy did. Again, I try to be accessible. I try to share my knowledge. I actually do feel that I know what I'm talking about and a lot of experience. I mean, sinew bows. I haven't seen you three or four bows. I haven't seen you ten bows. I haven't seen you twenty bows. I probably... I don't even know. It could amount to a hundred or more. Rawhide, not as much as sinew, uh, but still I've rawhide back a lot of bows successfully. And those are the things that I've learned and I hope that just listen to me talk about them and not actually demonstrating them. Because I'm speaking to people that probably have some knowledge base. Um, I hope that helped. If you have any questions about anything or you want me to do a video on something, because I've worked with, I, dang, I can't even count the number of bow woods I've worked with. I've worked with just about everything that's accessible in North America. Not beach. Not black ash that's too splitty along the things. Uh, anyway did a lot. Just feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll do my best. If I don't know, if I, if I don't feel I have an expertise in it, I'll just say so. I, I don't have an expertise in that. Um, thank you for watching and thank you for being such great supporters. You've got a great audience and I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And a shout out to all the 74 countries. My gosh, there's people in Indonesia, Malaysia, Iraq, Mexico, you know, watching me. I can't express, like, how great that feels. You know, it's nice to get away from this this um, toxic nationalism, you know, and start viewing humankind as a chain. You know, we all have something to contribute. We're all individual links. And when you put those links together, you get a strong chain. That's, that's the wisdom for today. I'll shut up now.